of society. They kind of have a uh, nihilistic, uh, you know, party attitude of eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. I mean, I'm seeing that not just in the truly wealthy or the controllers, but I'm seeing it in yuppies uh, and uh, people, you know, who are not making 200000 a year now. They're making 100000 uh, but they seem to be getting even more crazy. Uh, and so, it, I mean, this does look like Rome in its declining years. Uh, well, yes, yes, it is. Except uh, Rome's decline uh, took uh, a century or two, and I think ours will be much more rapid. I, you know, rather than for me to try to speculate, let let me just point out uh, how the economic information that's released, for example, the information released today, how it deceives us. For example, Alex, they reported that uh, that uh, we've had a um, an increase in uh, housing starts in July. Well, the way they got this increase in housing starts in July is that there was a massive downward revision of the housing starts that they uh, uh, proclaimed in June. So they said more housing starts had occurred in June than did. So this month, the revision in the June number downward then produces an increase in the July number. Do you see what I'm saying? If they had not altered the June number, then this uh, month we would have had a decline in housing starts. Now, they do that every month. They, they, they give you good news, and then the next month they secretly take it away. They downward revise it, and that then produces another month. But what's <laughs> happening now is, and I want you to speak to this, please, sir, is reality is colliding with their... Alice in Wonderland false reality and so the system is losing all credibility and I do see forms of peaceful revolution taking place take Arizona without any concerted organized effort in the last two years CNET News the Arizona Republic and others report that over 96 percent of people refused to pay them or even show up and the system tried to threaten them and make examples but finally gave in and pulled all the cameras out so i mean that right there is an example of just non-compliance uh, yes i suspect that non-compliance uh, will rise uh, as people lose resources they lose the ability to comply and they also lose their confidence in the government and, and, and therefore, they lose their willingness to comply. So when you don't have the ability or the willingness, then compliance has to fall. Let, let me give you another example of, um, uh, of the uh, way economic statistics uh, mislead. Also today, they announced that industrial production was up 1%. And this led to a, a, a rise in the stock market. But if you look at why is industrial production up 1%? It's largely due, I believe, to the fact that all the disruptions in automobile production over the last year or two about GM's bankruptcy, about the insolvency, I think, of Chrysler, you know, everything was uh, uh, disrupted to the extent that just getting back to stability produces statistically a rise in industrial production. Another way they get rises in industrial production is they use as a, as a way of measuring it power usage. So if power usage is high, they assume industrial output is rising. But, of course, what when you have these massive heat waves, what, what happens to power Sure, it's usage? August, and that's always the biggest <laughs> power consumption. So they won't look at the months before or the months after. They put it out there falsely as a trend. Well, here's it's an a, example. It's the monthly, that's right, it's a monthly report that they put out. Right? Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, you know how they manipulate, uh, you know, the cost-earnings ratio. You know uh, a lot more than I do as an economist how all this works. But, I mean, just to simply look at it, Dr. Roberts, uh, what was it, 15 years ago they changed the rules where a hamburger place gets a manual manufacturing credit for putting cheese on a uh, uh, you know a, a piece of meat and 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 putting bread on it and so here at my office 
uh, simply making films and packaging them and shipping them, I get the manufacturing credit. I mean, I take that credit, but I'm not really manufacturing under the classical sense. So they're changing definitions. That's right. That's exactly right, Alex. There's probably many more of these things than you or I are aware of. Um, but I just wanted to give uh, you and uh, your listeners the two examples from today's economic reports to show how misleading they can be. And so I think it's going to be a little bit longer. I can't say how much longer before people or very many people catch on. Of course, some people know already and have known for some time. But even if, you know, you, you uh, suggested that perhaps the elite themselves realize that it's all over with. But I'm not so sure because today's stock market rose substantially <laughs> on the basis of good news, which is uh, consists of statistical artifacts that, that aren't real. So I'm not sure that... Um, people have caught on or that the elite have caught on. Generally, uh, the elite are so full of hubris and self-confidence and arrogance and revel so much in their power that they don't catch on. They get swept away and they're surprised at what happened. No, historically, you're right. Dr. Roberts, stay there. We're going to break. I want to come back and go more into your excellent uh, piece the ecstasy of empire and that hubris you're talking about and how you talk about we're almost past the point of no return. What is that point of no return? We'll be right back. Attention, this is a special alert to all Americans who owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS. The IRS is now accepting reduced settlements from people who owe back taxes and dramatically lowering amounts owed. Due to the financial crisis in America, the IRS has announced a leniency plan in recognition of consumers' financial troubles in today's economy. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS, an open phone line has been established by American Tax Settlement for you to call and see if you qualify for a reduction by up to 75%. Number to call is 800 900 Again, the IRS is now accepting reduced settlements from consumers who owe back taxes in response to the decline in today's economy. If you are struggling with $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS, you now may be eligible for a dramatic reduction by up to 75% and save thousands of dollars. For free information and to see if you qualify, call the open phone line into American Tax Settlement now. 800-902-6969. 800-902-6969. Again, 800-902-6969. You worry, but only because you're paying attention. What's happening in the Gulf of Mexico illustrates an audacity toward nature. A similar audacity called GMO, or genetically modified organisms, means that the quality of commercially grown food may be compromised with our health in the balance. Now that summer's here, what better time to learn about the bounty that nature provides in wild edible food? Let author Linda Runyon show you the best kept secret in plain sight that food is everywhere you look. This summer, for the cost of a good meal or two out, you can literally starvation-proof yourself and your loved ones against any future craziness and put up tons of free food, too. Whatever experiment is being run on us, you can rest assured that Linda's 50 or so staple foods aren't involved. Our foods are their enemy. So go to ofthefield.com or call toll-free 1-888-51-EAT-FREE and take that first step. Make your oasis of food security and nutrition now. That's O-F-T-H-E-F-I-E-L-D dot com or call 1-888-513-2837. Start now and make 2010 your year of independence. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way, and you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for survivalseedbank.com. 
Dr. Roberts will be with us 15 minutes in the next hour. Then I'm going to cover a bunch of news and take your phone calls. But the mere fact that so many radio stations are now turning this show on, instead of getting one or two new affiliates a month over the years, and then stations are bought and sold and you lose some, we're now getting two, three, four a week. And these are big stations in the biggest cities. The fact that the Drudge Report would pick up your story from Infowars.com, the fact that I mean, a lot of people I talk to that are middle class, nouveau riche, working class, they are getting it. Now, I agree with you, the hubris-filled uh, super elites, the ruling class, um, a lot of them are, are very delusional. But you spoke about uh, the revolution uh, in 1917, 1918, and of course you're right. Uh, you know, as a, you know, a researcher, that the people rebelled. Then the communists came in from Germany, England, and New York and took it over. And I see that as the great danger. Ron Paul has said that, that during this crisis, we've got to be more active than ever so that people with horrible ideas don't use the crisis to get more control. Dr. Roberts? Uh, that's right. We, there's, no way to, uh, there's no way to predict the outcome of that. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> being vigilant, but that requires organization, which doesn't exist either. So I don't know what we can do other than rejoice that it will sweep away the current <laughs> the current bad crop. It may give us a worse crop. On the other hand, the people may provide the kind of leadership at the time that's needed. But Alex, let's rather than speculate on these things, let's let's talk about because you wanted to know you wanted to know uh at what point do, do we hit the point of no return Yes, and can't, can't get out of the crisis? And as I've emphasized many times uh, with you on your show, the, uh, the big crisis is when do we lose the dollar as reserve currency and when can the federal government no longer finance its huge budget deficit except by printing money? Now, so and I've made the point over and over you can finance a four or five hundred billion dollar deficit, uh, but you can't finance one that's one trillion, four or five hundred billion. And we've now into the second year of one and a half trillion dollar deficits. How are they being financed? Uh, I think they're being financed in the following ways: um, the the flight of individual investors from stocks into what they regard as safe government bonds. That's one way this being financed. Now, that can't go on forever. Once people have fled the stock market, I don't mean the big money managing firm, firms and the pension firms, but the individuals. They, they are leaving. They've left. Uh, the other way the uh, budget deficit is being financed is through the Federal Reserve's purchase of all of the bad uh, paper, the subprime derivatives and so forth that the banks uh, got themselves stuck with. The Fed simply bought that from them, gave them bank reserves, and the banks used those bank reserves to buy the government's bonds. So that's the second way it's being financed. Again, this can't go on forever either. <laughs> Once the, uh, well, the Fed's Fed, now announced they're going to start monetizing, correct? Uh, y yes, but what... They're, what they're talking about is what they're already doing. They're going to buy financial instruments from the banks, hoping that the banks then use the excess reserves to lend. But, of course, they won't because there are no creditworthy borrowers. And so it, that doesn't lead to money creation. The banks have to respond to that, you see, by creating new demand deposits, making loans. But they haven't been doing that. Instead, they use the excess reserves to buy more treasury bonds. <laughs> so now the third way, now the third way the government is used is the Greek crisis. Stay there, doctor. We've got a break back in 70 seconds. We'll cover the third way. When do we pass the porno return? That answer is straight ahead. Stay with us. The Genesis Communications Radio Network. You may be arrested and or subject to other police action.
tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of phenomena.